Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to process sinew. We're going to go from this to this. We're going to talk about how to do it properly without messing up. So let's go. Today we're going to be processing this sinew so that we can put it on the back of a bow for better performance. So the question is, you know, how do you get sinew? Well, there's a couple different ways to get sinew. One way is you can buy it online. There's a couple different places that you can actually buy it from people and you just purchase it. There's other ways though. You can shoot a deer or an elk, cut it out yourself and process it yourself. And if you choose that method, once you shoot the animal, you get this. The sinew is the tendon. It's in the leg and it's also in the back. Now the back sinew is a little bit longer than the leg sinew and that is the ideal, the best part. But you're going to need quite a bit of sinew, probably about two white-tailed deer's worth of sinew to back one single bow. Or you could have one elk's worth of sinew to back a bow. You could go to a deer processor and they'll normally let you, if you'll cut out the sinew yourself, they'll let you have it for free. If you have a friend that's a processor or you can just go ask them and they'll probably let you because they're just throwing it away anyway. Now that you've got your sinew, it should be like this, real hard, all dried out. Don't put it in water or anything once you get it. Just like this, just hard chunks of sinew really. And if you process your own sinew, what you want to do is lay this out in an open area where animals can't get to it. You can just lay it on a trash bag or something or some people will poke a little hanger through it and hang it up and let it dry out that way. You can do either one, doesn't really matter. The point is you need to get this stuff dry because it stinks. Our sinew is now dry, now it is time to process it to turn it from that to this and to this. So how do we do that? Well, you basically have to break it up and break it apart. Now you've got to be very careful though because if you hit on it too hard, you'll sever the tendons and you don't have any sinew left. All you really need is a hammer and a knife. And that's what I use with uh, a leg tendon like this one. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit it with a hammer. You can go on wood or you can come over here on the back of a vise or something. Now you don't want to process it too much, but once it's semi-flat like that, you can get your knife, stick it in the middle to give yourself a spot to grab and to pull apart. Like so. You're gonna keep pulling this apart into little strands until it's about the size of pencil lead. This right here is equal to one piece of sinew. And so it really spreads out a lot. And then what you want to do is you want to go and grab a piece of it and the next piece and line them up perfectly straight and, and continue that process on. And if one of them is a lot shorter, throw it off to the side. You want equal distances per the length of the sinew. And so you're just going to continue this for a while. And then once you're done, it'll look all nice and straight like this. And what you can do if it's really, really frayed is you can grab any kind of water or anything. And what you can do is you can just dampen it. And once it's damp, it'll allow you to get nice straighter piles. Now with the back sinew, there's no need to hammer it. You can just rip it apart. So much easier, so much faster. Plus, your strands are going to be much, much longer, which is good for strength. I have got one, two, 
three, four, two leg tendons, two back tendons done. Now all I've got left is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen more leg tendons, and boom, that's gonna be it. So. Something that's very important also is that your strands are not smaller than six inches. If they are smaller than six inches, then just throw them on a side and make a pile. You can still use it for some other things, but if you're using it to back the back of a bow, you really don't want strands smaller than six inches. Each bundle you wanna end up uh, eight to 10 little strands, but you can stack them in bigger bundles for now and then you can separate them right before you put it on the back of the bow because you'll pattern it just perfectly when we put it on the back of the bow. Thank you guys for joining me on this quick short video. I just wanted to show you how I process in you and I hope that this has been able to help you out. If you've never done it before, it is not too bad. It does smell though, so I'd warn you don't bring it inside or else your family might not like you so much. And I will warn you, it is gonna take you a while to process all the sinew. I did one thing in five minutes and I've got like 20 left. So we're gonna get to it. We're gonna knock all this out, but that is it for today because that's all I needed to show you. You guys can go process your own sinew now. Thank you for joining me. It has been a blast to have you here. As always, stay tuned because next Sunday another video is coming out and I have a bunch of really cool stuff planned as always. And if you liked it and if it was beneficial, for you today, you could subscribe for me and I would appreciate that. And then, I am going to use this sinew on a back of a bow. And I'm gonna recurve those bow limbs. Now, leave in the comments how long I should make this bow. How long should I make this bow? I wanna make it a hunting bow, so I don't want it to be too long but I don't wanna to go too short. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. If you don't have any ideas, let me know in the comments and thank you again for joining me. And with all that information, I think that wraps it up for us today. So I always like to remind you guys to go create a wonderful day because you do have control of your own day.